What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Mass Effect. We're here with Atticus, Ashley, and Tally. We have a few more things on the Citadel that I would like to do before we actually head out. Let's do a look at the journal, though. It looks like we picked up the missing Marines here, which was the Admiral Kahoku. And then we picked up privateers from a man named Gareth. But what I do want to do is I want to go over to CSEC and at least check in with the Spectre Requisition guy. And I also want to check in with Emily Wong and turn hers in. But Emily Wong was... Where the hell was she? She was over in... She was over by Flux. So let's just go ahead and head out. Flux was... The med clinic? We'll just go to the med clinic because that's the... Closest thing I can remember that might be where Emily Wong is. You arrived at the medical center in the wards. Alright, well, let's head over here then. Turn it into Emily. And then I'm going to start making our way out of the Citadel to... Picking our first mission and then taking it from there. Word on the street is that you've been busy. Congratulations on taking down Fist. I was sure he was a big player in anything going on here. Did you find anything in his office that could help me? Would these help? Yeah. I can imagine it definitely will help our calls. These OSDs might have the information you're looking for. <sighs> You've got this files? This could be even bigger than I'd hoped. Here, Commander. For your trouble. I can offer more and you owe me more. What would my future cooperation be worth? Say, an interview when my investigation is over? Exclusive? You talk to me before you talk to anyone else? That would be worth quite a bit, and I'd be very happy to compensate you accordingly. Here you are. Now, if you'll excuse me, I should go see what's on these discs. Alright, well, take care. Let's head on over to... CSEC Academy? Since it's right here. So, Emily Wong is done. Did it come up anything else on Emily Wong? Well, let's just keep our eyes out then, because if Emily's around and about and she has maybe more quests for us, we'll pick them up, but let's just head to CSEC and let's get the fuck out of here. We'll come back to the Citadel, I'm thinking throughout the playthrough. I don't want to 100% this place at once, so... In other news, Exogenicorp is still denying reports that one of their survey teams has gone missing in the Hades Gamma Cluster. When asked why communication with the survey team was suddenly cut off last week, company officials refused to comment. A missing survey team in the Hades Gamma? Well, that's... There we go. We got an update for a quest there. Though maybe we should ride up and down the elevator for a while and pick up quests. Missing survey team? Privateers? Missing Marines? Unusual readings? Strange transmission? So we're actually probably good. But as I was saying with the Citadel, I feel like it will be better if we just sporadically do it at times. Like I said, I don't know if we're going to miss quests. Though, I can imagine we probably won't. I just think more quests will upgrade. More quests will update in time, like becoming a Spectre. So, I'm thinking that we're actually probably good to go. Alright, we have another Keeper here. That's probably like 17, maybe. 70. One sec, looking you up. Commander Shepard, here with the Alliance Military. First time on the Citadel, that about right? You know me? Everyone knows you. How do you know who I am? I'm the CSEC Requisitions Officer. I need to make sure our buyers are authorized. So, will you be purchasing anything today, Commander Shepard? Show me what you've got. Sounds good. Just let me set you up. Well, this must be a mistake. System's telling me to offer you our select stock. Spectre. Well, I heard about that, but I didn't realize it was you. Sorry, Commander. Just show me what you've got. I'll open the rare stocks for you, Commander. Enjoy. We got rare stocks for being a Spectre. Do you have any fucking better armor, man? Heavy human? Oh! Well, we can't get heavy, right? We're only light being an adept, so... No, we can't even get this either. Damn! The Onyx is... Oh, it's the N7 armor. Or maybe all of it's N7. Let's go ahead and buy Alderan Labs license. 
It doesn't look like he has anything that we could possibly get. This will be the only thing, but how much money do we have? Yeah, we don't have enough. All right. Well, so be it, friend. Have a good one. Take care. Let's go to the other side of the Citadel here, or... Let's go to the other side of CSEC and see if there's anything up here. And then we will go ahead and head out. I'm thinking that I want to go and do... Well, just from the journal, maybe we'll pick up more as we go. Okay, Jaleed. Let me get this straight. Your business partner, Shorman, he's threatened you. Well, no, uh, not exactly. But he wants to meet with me. I think he's going to kill me. And why do you think that? I... I can't really get into the details. But Shorban will kill me if I leave here unprotected. I can't help you. Not unless you give me something more to go on. I... I can't. I'm sorry. Alright, well we'll do that later. Let's go ahead and see if we can hack this computer here. Decryption's too low. Wait. Ash has four abilities here, so let's see. Let's do fitness for Ash. Let's do another one in the soldier. Her health is looking good. And look at it, regenerates four health per second. She is like a Krogan. You're just like fucking Rex. Let's work on getting combat armor up a bit more, and then at least one in the first aid. I think that's going to be good. And then Tally. Oh, thank you, Tally. So Master Overload, which will be able to open every little electronic, I think. I don't know if we have to go up higher, but I'm pretty sure we probably don't. And then Master Sabotage, we can open up chests with that. So, alright. With Tally, let's do... Let's try hacking. Temporary drives basic robotics enemies berserk, so they will attack anything nearby, including their former allies. Yes, please. Should we work on pistols? Let's just do basic armor for now. She's got a flat 5% damage reduction and a 5% hardening reduction as well. Alright. Let's see if Tally can actually do this. Easy peasy, Tally. Holy. Oh. I think we're going to do it. We just got it. Holy moly. We're talking like milliseconds there. CSEC is investigating a woman named Helena Blake. There's no hard evidence against her. But if these reports are correct, she's a powerful criminal element on the Citadel. She was last seen near the Emporium on the Presidium. We're going to have to keep an eye out for this criminal syndicate, Alana Blake. Alright, well let's go up here. Nothing in there. It's so enjoyable just to run around a CSEC, or Citadel in general. I'm actually going to miss it since we're leaving, but I can't wait to just go and explore the, the uncharted worlds and planets. And then get the main quest. Like, I'm thinking Admiral Kahoku's quest, yeah? First? Because it seemed pretty dire with trying to find his marines. But, if the main quest leads us somewhere different, I think we're going to do the main quest. And get on that. Get started. We need a path here with a story. Besides just going to the Citadel. Now that we're a Spectre, we need, we need to find some more evidence on where Saren could possibly be. But, let's... How the hell do we get out of here? They did say the docking bay was by CSEC, right? It's either this one or this one. One of these lead to the docking bay. Let's try this one. My oh, people are wanderers, not military leaders. All this fighting seems strange. It must be more familiar for you, Chief Williams. Uh, trying to take down a rogue specter and his army of synthetics? No. They didn't cover this in basic. <laughs> well, I guess you're... Well, they're covering it now, Ash. We got... Look at... Ud <laughs> What's up, Udina? I've got big news for you, Shepard. Captain Anderson is stepping down as commanding officer of the Normandy. The ship is yours now. She's quick and quiet, and you know the crew. Perfect ship for a Spectre. Treat her well, Commander. Force retirement? This isn't right. The Normandy belongs to you. You needed your own ship. A Spectre can't answer to anyone but the Council. 
And it's time for me to step down. Any word on Saren? There's more to this? Yeah, there's a bit more to this. She just... He just kicked Anderson to the fucking curb here, man. That's terrible. Why can't Anderson be part of our crew at this point? If you want us in charge, he can just be part of our crew. He can be our XO or something, right? Come clean with me, Captain. You owe me that much. I was in your shoes 20 years ago, Shepard. They were considering me for the Spectres. Why didn't you ever mention this? What was I supposed to say? I could have been a Spectre, but I blew it. I failed, Commander. It's not something I'm proud of. Ask me later and I'll tell you the whole story. For now, all you need to know is, I was sent on a mission with Saren, and he made sure the Council rejected me. I had my shot. It came and went. Now you have a chance to make up for my mistakes. Saren will fucking pay. Yeah, he indeed will. Saren's not going to get away this time. Saren's gone. Don't even try to find him. But we know what he's after. The conduit. He's got his Geth scouring the Traverse, looking for clues. We had reports of Geth in the Ferro system shortly before our colony there dropped out of contact, and there have been sightings around Noveria. Find out what Saren was after on Ferros and Noveria. Maybe you can figure out where the conduit is before he does. Does that even make sense? Anderson, does, Anderson says don't even try to find it. Well, we have to try to find him to even find where the conduit is, because he's looking for this conduit, so... What about the Reapers? The Reapers are the real threat. I'm with the Council on this one, Shepard. I'm not sure they even exist. But if they do exist, the Conduit's the key to bringing them back. Stop Saren from getting the Conduit, and we stop the Reapers from returning. I'll stop him. We have one more lead. Matriarch Benezia, the other voice in that recording. She has a daughter, a scientist who specializes in the Protheans. We don't know if she's involved, but it might be a good idea to try and find her. See what she knows. Her name's Liara, Dr. Liara Tassoni. We have reports she was exploring an archaeological dig on one of the uncharted worlds in the Artemis Tau Cluster. I'll start there. I'll start with Pharos or Novaria. Let's start there. Let's find the Dr. Liara Tassoni. Sounds like we should head for the Artemis Tau Cluster. It's your decision, Commander. You're a specter now. You don't answer to us. But your actions still reflect on humanity as a whole. You make a mess and I get stuck cleaning it up. <laughs> That's your damn job, Udina. I'll take care of Saren. You take care of the political fallout. Not exactly the answer I was looking for, Shepard. Remember, you were a human long before you were a specter. I have a meeting to get to. Captain Anderson can answer any questions you might have. Toodles, Udina, you fucking prick. Alright, well... Hold on. Inspect the Normandy weapons? Ooh. Anderson, we'll talk to you in a minute, friend. Inspect the thrusters? I know I've seen that somewhere. Where the hell did that go? Wasn't there another one there? Maybe we can only get it from here? What the hell? I know I seen something else here. Did it just automatically get it when we got the second one? Did we not see another one? I swore I just seen another one that said thrusters. What the fuck? Perhaps a bug, I guess? Motherfucker, you better let me examine my ship. Oh, look, a keeper! How many is that? What do we got with these keepers, man? So, what's the keepers again? Uh, Scan the keepers right here. We're 18 of 20. We only have two more left, friends. Oh, my word. Motherfucker, you better let me examine this. Can I put my weapon again? Alright, let's... Who knows? The Normandy is amazing, Shepard. It's an honor to be among her crew. It sure is. Oh, this is quite the view, Commander. So peaceful up here. Very romantic. If you're into that sort of thing. Alright, Ash. Maybe I might be into that sort of thing. I don't know what's... Where it could possibly be. Alright. Let's just talk to Anderson. Because I don't know what the hell is going on with that little codex thingy, Majiggy. Yes, Commander. How are you holding up? Honestly, 
This isn't how I pictured my career coming to an end. Pushing papers really isn't my thing, but you're the one who can stop Saren. I believe in you, Shepard. If that means I have to step aside, so be it. What do you know about the Artemis Tau cluster? Not much. I've never been there myself. A handful of systems with a few small, uncharted worlds, but no real colonies. Might not be easy finding Dr. Tassoni out there. My advice is to look for the world with the Prothean ruins. Look for the world with the Prothean ruins. Any extra intel you can give me on our colony at Pharos? The entire planet used to be one giant Prothean city. Mostly ruins now. But some of the infrastructure is still intact. The colony tried to build on what the Protheans left behind. We lost all contact with them when the Geth attacked. What can you tell me about Novaria? Novaria's trouble. Always has been. The whole planet's basically a center for corporations to conduct illegal research. Watch your back there, Shepard. Spectres are about the only form of citadel authority Novaria respects. But they aren't popular. Alright, well let's ask Anderson, you worked with the Spectres? We did suspect. It's crazy how Harkin kind of knew. He was kind of right in his own little way, but we did suspect that he was um, a candidate for the Spectres. But then he said something about a mission went terribly wrong. I want to know the truth about you and Saren. I want to know about the mission you were on together all those years ago. We had intel on a rogue scientist being funded by Batarian interests. He was trying to set up a facility to develop illegal AI technology out in the Verge. Alliance Intel had done all the work, but the Council wanted a Spectre involved. We compromised. I was assigned to help Saren in his investigation. We tracked the scientist to a refining facility on Kamala. He was hidden away somewhere inside, protected by an army of Batarian mercenaries. The plan was simple. Sneak into the plant, capture the scientist, sneak back out. Quick, quiet, and a minimum of bloodshed. I'm guessing things didn't go as planned. Saren and I split up to cover more ground. Then about halfway through the mission, there was a massive explosion in the refinery core. Officially, it was ruled an accident, but I think Saren detonated it on purpose to draw off the enemy guards. Sounds like overkill to me. The explosion tore the refinery to shreds. The whole place was on fire. Black chemical clouds poured out into the atmosphere. Nobody inside survived. There was a camp for the workers and their families nearby. Between the fires and the toxic fumes, the final death count was over 500. Mostly civilians. Saren didn't care. The target was eliminated. Mission accomplished. And I ended up taking the blame. That ended all talk of me joining the Spectres. Saren caused the explosion. How'd he pin it on you? In his report, Saren accused me of blowing his cover. He said it was my fault the guards were ready for us. He claimed that's why it turned into a massacre. Saren's report was all the proof the Council needed to kill my chances of becoming a Spectre. Don't blame yourself, Captain. I don't. I blame Saren. I think he wanted things to go bad. He was looking for an excuse to blow that refinery. Maybe he just likes the violence. Maybe he was just trying to make me look bad to keep humans out of the Spectres. If so, he pulled it off. Why'd you let him get away with it? Who do you think the Council was going to listen to? Me? Or their best agent? I had a bad feeling about him right from the start. I should have been more careful. Maybe I could have stopped things before they got out of hand. The only thing I care about is stopping Saren. You're right, Commander. It's no good living in the past. I should go. I'll be here if you need anything. Poor Anderson here. He's gotten fucked over in his past. Now he's getting fucked over right now from Odina. He is just... Anderson, your life is not easy, friend. It does not go easy for you. Let's see if we can see this again. I literally... It was there, right? Did we see something? Did we see another one? It sucks that we're not going to be able to get the codex if it is, but maybe we got it, you know? But I do like to read everything in time. You know, I'm a terrible goddamn reader, but I still would like to actually read all the stuff. But let's go ahead and just get into the Normandy and start our path. We're going to go and find this Dr. Tassoni first, but I think before we actually go to her, we're going to hit up uh, Admiral Kahoku's things. Stand by, shore party. Decontamination in progress. I heard what happened to Captain Anderson. Survives a hundred battles and then gets taken down by backroom politics. Just watch your back, Commander. If things go bad on this mission, you're next on their chopping block. It does feel wrong. It feels so wrong to just undermine Anderson like this. Even though we're... Like, technically we're not undermining Anderson, obviously. We have no choice, but... 
it just feels bad that Anderson just gets kicked to the side like he's a piece of trash, even though he's not. And that's just ridiculous. Captain Anderson should be the one in charge. It's like I'm stealing the ship from him. Yeah, the captain got screwed. But it's not like you could have stopped it. Nobody's blaming you. Everyone on this ship's behind you, Commander. 100%. Intercom's open. If you got anything you want to say to the crew, now's the time. Now we do things my fucking way. My way or the highway. Need to be honest with him? Sure. This is Commander Shepard speaking. We have our orders. Find Saren before he finds the conduit. I won't lie to you, crew. This mission isn't going to be easy. Humanity must do its part. Eden Prime was just the start. Yeah, Eden Prime was just the start. This began with an attack on a human settlement in the Traverse. But we know Saren won't stop there. His Geth armies aren't going to stay on the far fringes of Citadel space. Saren will be ready for us? For too long, our species has stood apart from the others. Now it's time for us to step up and do our part for the rest of the galaxy. Time to show them what humans are made of. Saren will be ready for us. Saren can't hide from us, we're gonna whoop his ass. <laughs> our enemy knows we're coming. When we go into the Traverse, Saren's followers will be waiting for us. But we'll be ready for them, too. Humanity needs to do this. Not just for our own sake, but for the sake of every other species in Citadel space. Saren must be stopped. And I promise you all, we will stop him. Well said, Commander. Captain will be proud. I think he would be proud there, Joker. It's just unfortunate he's not here to see it. The Captain gave up everything so I could have this chance. We can't fail. Yes, sir. It just hurts my heart, man. It, sh it literally, truly does that Anderson got screwed over that bad. Like, it's just so wrong. Anderson's such a good guy, too. Alright, well, let's go ahead and bullshit with people. Commander, something you need? What's up, Joker? Status report? How's the Normandy performing? Is she everything they said she'd be? She's the best ship in the fleet. If you've got a pilot who knows how to handle her. Balance isn't what you'd expect. Takes a while to get used to that oversized drive core we got stuffed in the back, and her power can sneak up on you if you're not careful. The Normandy's probably too much ship for your average Alliance pilot, Commander. Lucky for you, I'm anything but average. I like to know my crew. Mind if I ask you a few questions? <laughs> I can see where this is going. You did a background check on me, didn't you? Well, I'll tell you the same thing I told the Captain. You want me as your pilot. I'm not good. I'm not even great. I am the best damn helmsman in the Alliance fleet. Top of my class in flight school, I earned that. All those commendations in my file, I earned every single one. Those weren't given to me as charity for my disease. Are you contagious? Oh my word. I didn't mean to assault you. It's not like we even knew that you were... You had some kind of disease, Joker. I'm sorry, Joker. I didn't even know you were sick. You mean... You mean you didn't know? Oh, crap. Okay, I've got Vrolic Syndrome, brittle bone disease. The bones in my legs never develop properly, they're basically hollow, too much force and they'll shatter. Even with crutches and my leg braces, it's hard to get around. One wrong step and crack! It's very dramatic, but I've learned to manage my condition, Commander. Put the Normandy in my hands and I'll make her dance for you. Just don't ask me to get up and dance unless, you know, you like the sound of snapping shin bones. Tell me about your disease. How'd you get your nickname? Why does everyone call you Joker? It's a lot shorter than saying Alliance Flight Lieutenant Jeff Moreau. Plus, I love to make little children laugh. That's no answer and yeah, right? <laughs> I was just thinking how much you remind me of Santa Claus. Look, I didn't pick the name. <laughs> One of the instructors in flight school used to bug me about never smiling. She started calling me Joker, hmm, and it stuck. Why didn't you ever smile? Hey, I worked my ass off in flight school, Commander. The world's not gonna hand you anything if you go around grinning like an idiot. By the end of the year, I was the best pilot in the academy. Even better than the instructors, and everybody knew it. They'd all got their asses kicked by the sickly kid with the creaky little legs. One guess who was smiling at graduation. Let's see, what do we have? Personal history? We'll ask them that later. Let's talk about the disease for now. I need to know more about this Vrolic Syndrome if I'm putting my ship in your hands. Yeah, of course you do. It's an extremely rare condition. Nobody knows exactly what causes it. Genetic, maybe. It's treatable, but there's no cure. They classify my case as moderate to severe. 
I was born with over a dozen fractures, hip, thighs, ankles, my bones were already breaking in the womb. A hundred years ago, I wouldn't have survived past my first year. Lucky for me, modern medical science has turned me into a productive member of society. How do you do your job? That's a pretty rough disease, Joker. But it's pretty amazing that he's sitting here as literally the best pilot in the Alliance fleet fronts. So he's done something and not just, you know, accepted the disease and just kept on barely moving through life. He literally captured his dream and kept on going, and that's so inspiring. You're not going to break a bone trying to fly the ship, are you? Uh, I don't fly with my feet, Commander, so I'm fine as long as I'm in this chair. I gotta be real careful when I get up to take a piss, though. I can do my job as well as anyone on the ship. Better, actually. So don't worry about it. I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable. Let's talk about something else. Whatever you want, Commander. I have to go. Alright, see ya. Alright, see ya. Take it easy, Joker. Have a good one. Alright, let's check in with everybody else. Pick up any codexes if we can pick them up, and then we can interact with the galaxy map here and get the hell out of here. What's up, Presley? If anyone has to take over for Captain Anderson, I'm glad it's you. I'm not sure about having non-humans on our ship, though. They're on our side? Yeah, they're on our fucking side, Presley. We're all on the same team here, Presley. With all due respect, sir, that's what they said about Nihilus. Look how that turned out. You doubt my decisions? I'm in charge here, Presley. I decide if we have non-humans on this vessel. Yes, sir. Understood, sir. Damn, Shepard, alright. Put Presley in this place immediately, wow. Aliens on the ship and personal questions. Let's just dig. Speak freely, Presley. I want to know if you have a problem with non-humans. It's not that, Commander. Humanity has always handled its own problems. Saren attacked one of our colonies. We should be the ones to stop him. We don't need their help. Never turn away help? Some people think asking for help is a sign of weakness. That's just being stupid and stubborn. No matter how strong you are, allies can make you stronger. I guess so. Maybe I'm just stuck in the old ways of thinking. But don't worry, Commander, this won't be a problem. How did you end up assigned to the Normandy? I signed up with the Alliance as a navigator right out of school. Following in my grandfather's footsteps, I guess. My first posting was on the Agincourt. We were one of the first reinforcements to arrive at Elysium after the Blitz hit. <laughs> Those raiders were no match for an Alliance frigate. Of course, the only reason the colony was still standing was because of you, Commander. I can't believe you held out as long as you did. How'd you end up on the Normandy? I got my officer's commission after Elysium. Must have made an impression on the right people. Captain asked for me when he was picking his crew. Well, there you go, Presley. Carry on, Presley. Yes, sir. We got Renegade and Paragon for that. Wow. All right, Presley, we'll take it easy. Let's see, we're gonna have to... I feel like I wanna... My motherfucker just saluted us. I feel like I want to actually check in with the crew first before we head out. I don't wanna miss anything. Because... After each mission, we probably wanna go and check in the crew and see how everyone's doing. So I can imagine it probably won't update every single mission with every single thing we do. Is anyone even in here? Chakwas, can we talk to her? Yes, Commander. Is there something you need? I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Well, we definitely already talked about that stuff. Let's talk to Caden. Hold on. What's up? Nothing in our locker. Oh! We have some codexes here. What's up, Caden? Anything you need, Commander? Looking for personal input? Yeah, sure. Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? I've wasted enough of your time for now, Commander. We'll have time for personal debriefings later. What's your opinion on the last mission? I don't see how we could have done things any better. At least not without getting to Eden Prime sooner. And we were on the scene faster than any other Alliance ship could have been. We'll talk another time, Lieutenant. Commander? Alright, well, Caden definitely doesn't have anything right now. Let's see about... Oh, we got a personal manual here. Personal manual. It's probably going to be... More history on Shepard, I can imagine. Let's head down to the docking bay and see if there's... Obviously. It's gotta be down here. We still need to check in with Rex, Tally, and... Well, Rex, Tally, Garrus, 
And Williams. Has he got anything? Looking for supplies? Not right now, thanks. No problem. Keep Take it back. easy. What's up, Garrus? Thanks for bringing me on board, Commander. I knew working with a Spectre would be better than life at CSEC. Have you worked with a Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. At CSEC, you're buried by rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. It's not that bad. For the most part, the rules are there for a reason. Maybe. But sometimes it feels like the rules are only there to stop me from doing my work. If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. But CSEC wants it done their way. Protocol and procedure come first. That's why I left. That was your reason, and I see? So you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things? There's more to it than that. It didn't start out bad, but as I rose in ranks, I got saddled with more and more red tape. CSEC's handling of Saren was typical. I just couldn't take it anymore. I hate leaving. You hate leaving, but you did it. But I mean, it must have been a tough choice. I feel like Garrus probably wouldn't have left if CSEC was a bit different and he was able to do a little bit more in, let's not say his way in general because he's not obviously the one on top, but maybe a little bit more to his beliefs. If the people up top were a bit more like Garrus, he probably would have stayed. I hope you made the right choice. I'd hate for you to regret it later. Well, that's sort of why I teamed up with you. It's a chance for me to get off the Citadel, see how things are done outside CSEC. Either way, I plan to make the most of this. And without CSEC headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. Sounds good to me, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> if getting the job done means endangering innocent people, then no. We get the job done right, not fast. Got it? I wasn't trying to. I understand, Commander. It's alright, Garrus. We'll be space bros soon enough. Space besties. You know. You name it. The... I feel like the whole situation with him going in there and shooting the person to get to the, uh... The captive, the Dr. Michelle situation, how he just shot the guy. That was pretty damn risky. But we don't always want... I, I don't, like, when I'm visioning Garrus here, like, I don't want, I don't want him to always be like that, right? Like, he wants to get stuff done his own way, but maybe we can show him a different way? Possibly? Maybe have Shepard rub off on him? In a good way? Alright, let's talk to Ash. Commander? Can we talk? Sure. Do you have a few minutes to talk one-on-one? -on -one? I'm sorry, Commander. I need to get my duty squared away. I wouldn't mind talking more later, though. All right, Ash. What's your opinion on the last mission? Kind of wish you'd got there sooner, Commander. No offense. I appreciate the rescue. I just wish... That we saved your unit? Yeah, that would have been nice, Ash. You wish we'd been able to save the rest of your unit? Yes, sir. If I had been more alert, we wouldn't have been cut down by an ambush. I don't really think it's your fault alone, Ash. There's a lot of variables here. The Geth are perfect ambushers. They don't move, they don't make noise. They don't even breathe. Sir, they have flashlight heads. I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. They do indeed have flashlight heads. You can definitely see them in the dark. Dismissed, Chief. Sir. <laughs> All right, Ash, take it easy. Look at Rex. Come on, let's headbutt each other. Nice ship you got, Shepard. What can I do for you? Personal inquiry. What's your story, Rex? There's no story. Go ask the Quarian if you want stories. Don't be an ass, just a short one. Come on, Rex, don't be an ass. You Krogan lived for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was fun. I heard about that. You know, they almost did the same to us. It's not the same. It isn't? It seems pretty much the same to me. So your people were infected with a genetic mutation? An infection that makes only a few in a thousand children survive birth? And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? Yeah, it's definitely not nowhere near the same. We really can't compare to the Krogans, to be honest. I suppose it isn't all the same. I don't expect you to understand. 
But don't compare humanity's fate with the Krogan. I was just making conversation. I wasn't trying to upset you. Your ignorance doesn't upset me, Shepard. As for the Krogan, I gave up on them long ago. The genophage infected us, but it's not what's killing us. Extinction and genophage? Let's learn more about this. Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Lots of species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. We're not settlers. We're warriors. We want to fight. So we leave. Hire ourselves out. And most of us never go back. What can you tell me about the genophage? Ask the Salarians if you want details. They made it. All I know, it makes breeding nearly impossible. Thousands die in stillbirth, and most never get that far. Every Krogan is infected, every one. And no one's rushing to find a cure. Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? When was the last time you saw a Krogan scientist? You ask a Krogan, would he rather find a cure for the genophage or fight for credits? He'll choose fighting every time. It's just who we are, Shepard. I can't change that. Nobody can. Well, it makes sense, Rex. Your species does definitely seem a bit headstrong. More than into the, uh... Let's just say book smart. So long, Rex. Shepard. Take it easy, Rex. We are definitely going to be learning about Krogan soon enough because I do want to learn more about Rex. The Krogan are so interesting, man. They were uplifted by the Salarians. And the Turians and the Salarians then pretty much destroyed the Krogan. And now they're just dying off, he was saying, pretty much. Hey, Commander, you know that Quarian Tally? She's been spending all her time down here asking me about our engines. I'll get rid of her? No way. I'll tell her to leave you alone. What? No, she's amazing. I wish my guys were half as smart as she is. Give her a month on board and she'll know more about our engines than I do. She's got a real knack for technology, that one. I can see why you wanted her to come along. I didn't. <laughs> what the fuck? I figured she'd be a real asset to the team. You got an eye for talent, Commander, but I'm guessing that's not why you came down here. Well, here we go. We can learn about a shit ton of stuff with the Normandy. Fill me in on the IES stealth systems. How does it work exactly? You can't hide a ship out in space. They emit too much heat and radiation. Too easy for sensors to pick them up, unless you find a way to capture those emissions. So our stealth systems trap the energy we give off in storage sinks built into the ship itself. No emissions to give away our location. Eventually, the sinks have to be vented. More than a few hours silent running and they overheat. Cook us inside our own hull. I was just literally thinking that, like, what the hell is gonna happen when you just storm and keep on storing? The ship will fucking blow up, probably. There's no way for anyone to detect us? A visual scan can still pick us up. Anyone looking out a window can see us plain as day. But you have to be pretty close to get an actual visual out in space. Most vessels rely on scanners. As long as the stealth systems are engaged, they can't see us. Not unless we accelerate to FTL speeds. That is so brilliant if you think about it. So, these sensors can only pick up heat emissions, pretty much. And if Normandy's confined in the heat emissions to where they can't see it, you just won't see the ship ever. And the ship seems so fast it is, so the Normandy will strike, kill you before you even know what the fuck's going on. Why doesn't it work with faster than light travel? Cranking up the FTL, blue shifts our emissions, pushes them into frequencies too high to capture in the sinks. As soon as we make the jump, it's like setting off a flare. Sensors can pick up our location whenever we enter or exit FTL flight, but for short-range missions, our stealth systems are amazing, and we've got the only one. And we got the only one. So we're the only ship. The only ship in the entire fucking galaxy like this. Wow. Where else have you served, Adams? If you name a class of Alliance ship, I've probably served on it. Everything from dreadnoughts and carriers right down to frigates like the Normandy. My last assignment was on the Tokyo. Only a cruiser, but she was a good ship. Couldn't hold a candle to the Normandy, though. 
I don't think anything can really hold a candle to the Normandy, Adams. I want to know more about the Normandy. She's the best ship I've ever served on. Probably the fastest vessel ever designed. And she's the only one using the new Tantalus Drive Core. What's so special about the Tantalus Drive Core? Proportionally, it's about twice the size of any other vessel. Not only are we faster, but we can run at FTL speeds longer before we have to discharge the core. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, Commander. Toodles, Adams. Have a good day. And then, let's talk to Tally. Let's ask her a little bit. Your ship's amazing, Shepard. I've never seen a drive core like this before. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. I'm starting to understand why you humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. Gathering information on us, are we? The Normandy's a prototype. Cutting-edge technology. A month ago, I was patching a makeshift fuel line into a converted tug ship in the flotilla. Now, I'm sitting on board one of the most advanced vessels in Citadel space. I have to thank you again for bringing me along. Traveling on a vessel like this is a dream come true for me. I had no idea you found ship technology so interesting. It comes with being a Quarian. The migrant fleet is the key to the survival of my people. Ships are our most valuable resource. But we don't have anything like this. We make do with cast-offs and second-hand equipment. We just try to keep them running for as long as we can. Some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight from the Geth. 300 years ago? Holy moly. I can't believe your fleet's still using ships that are three centuries old. They're constantly being repaired, modified, and refitted. They aren't pretty, but they work. Mostly. We've tried to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla. Grow our own food, mine, and process our own fuel. But some things we just can't make on our own. A patch to maintain the hull integrity requires raw materials we just don't have. That's why our pilgrimages are so important. Alright, so Quarians get and pilgrimage. Let's learn more about, since she just said pilgrimage, we'll learn more about pilgrimage. But I'm thinking, Tally seems like she can probably talk a lot and we can learn a lot of things. So everything is so interesting, but let's just, let's just do pilgrimage, or should we do Quarians? Let's ask her about Quarians first. Tell me about your people. Our lives aren't easy. Resources are scarce, and we are constantly on the move. Everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. There are 17 million Quarians in the flotilla, and each of us relies on the others for survival. The bonds among my people are strong. Unfortunately, we have had to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. If our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed. In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. Man, the Quarians have it rough, runs. We... The little things that we take for granted, the Quarians can't even, they can't even indulge in having multiple children in a, in a single family, and that's really, that's really rough. On certain circumstances, obviously, but still. That's your government. The Conclave is our civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative to serve on the Conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, the captain has the final say. It's a tradition that dates back to the early days, when the fleet was governed by martial law. Fortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give them advice and guidance. So the ultimate power rests with elected officials? In practice, the Conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives. But in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. 
These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. Alright, well, that'll be enough for now. I should go. See you later. Remember that one time when we said we wanted to go to get to Liara in the main quest? Yeah, we probably won't. But what intrigues me so much about the Quarians, right, is... Okay, so they live on this flotilla. They pretty much just float around in space, yeah? And... You would figure by... Let's, what, what has it been? Who even knows how many years? 300 plus years probably at this point? So why don't they at least try to find planets that might be habitable for them and just start anew, right? Instead of just floating around on ships, they can just, they can build their numbers up infinite then. They won't have to worry about one, maybe two childbirths in a single family or overpopulating or underpopulating. So why don't they just do that? I don't, that's why I'm not understanding why they just don't. Are they afraid that they can't find anything, or are they just afraid that they can't find anything in general? There are billions of planets out there. There's all types of stuff. Alright, let's look at the journal here, because this is what we're going to do. Let's see. We have Find Leora Tassoni. Leora Tassoni, an Asari archaeologist famed for her knowledge of the Protheans, is being sought by Saren. Her last known location was somewhere in the Artemis Tau Cluster. Explore the uncharted worlds of the Artemis Tau Cluster to find Liara to Sony. But wasn't there another mission that was in the Artemis Tau as well? Person of interest? I'm pretty sure it was Kahoku's mission. Admiral Kahoku has asked you to find a missing recon team in the Sparta system. All contact with the team was lost shortly after they were sent to investigate suspicious activity in the area. But... Go to the Sparta system in the Artemis Tau Cluster and look for the recon team. That's where we'll go. We'll hit up some systems in the Artemis Tau and see where that leads us. Well, here we go. Supposedly constructed by the longest thick Protheans, this Colossus Deep Space Station serves as the capital of the Citadel Council. Gravity is simulated through rotation and is a comfortable 1.02 standard G's on the wards and a light 0.3 standard G's on the Presidian arm. 44.7 kilometers, diameter open, 12.8 kilometers, population 13.2 million, not including keepers. Gross weight 7.11 billion metric tons. Wow. How the fuck do we get out of here? Oh. Citadel? Serpent Nebula. Oh, here we look at this beauty. Oh my word. It's absolutely fucking beautiful. Horsehead Nebula. That's no very asteroid X57. I'm pretty sure this is the DLC, yeah? That's something we would do way later. Leora's dig site right here. Artemis Tau. Sparta is where Kahuku is. We have the Macedon, Gnosis, Athens. Let's just explore around in here first. Let's do... Let's just pick one and go. Let's go with the Athens first. See where the hell it leads us. There's going to be a lot of exploring. I'm thinking with the Uncharted Worlds, we'll probably... I'm not sure how we're actually going to do that, because there's a lot of exploring in Uncharted Worlds. Fucking forward march. Alright, well we have, let's see, lots of planets here. Let's check out these planets. Salamis? The geological properties of Salamis have been scanned from orbit, but little else is known about it due to its thick carbon dioxide atmosphere and proximity to the energetic star Athens. The equatorial daytime... Temperatures have been known to turn the surface molten. 
The crust is composed of iron with deposits of platinum group metals. Proteins? Proteinous? Like the Hanar homeworld, Proteus has more than 90% ocean cover. The incredible heat thrown off from Athens raised global humidity to 100% creates consistent cloud covers and powers colossus typhoons that rage across the surface year-round. Hot, humid, and storm-wracked, Proteus' rare combination of oxygen, nitrogen, atmosphere, and carbon-based biosphere nonetheless recommend it for colonization. A pilot program is studying the possibility of colonies below the ocean surface, safe from the worst effects of the weather. Wow. Oh, we can survey it. Gas deposit surveyed. Proteus has a large amount of free oxygen. Well, there we go. Let's go ahead and just take that free oxygen, shall we? Cersei? And we can survey this one too. Cersei is a modestly sized hydrogen helium gas giant with traces of sulfur and chlorine. These give it the striking yellow green tint as the development of the Proteus colony continues. Cersei will likely be developed for helium 3 mining. Gas deposit surveyed. While scanning this gas giant, you detected a large concentration of helium 3. Well, thank you. What is this one? Nausicaa? Traces of sodium in the atmosphere give Nausicaa its overall dark gray color, but it is otherwise a typical hydrogen helium gas giant. An abundance of water vapor in the upper atmosphere account for its white clouds. So nothing of note here. We already did Salamis, right? Yeah? Pretty sure we already did that one. And then we have... Pharos? Distant Pharos has seen only a cursory examination by any unmanned probe. It has a trace atmosphere of nitrogen and argon. Its surface is mainly composed of tin with deposits of carbon. Deeper craters have been partly filled by ice, suggesting there may be a significant amount of water locked up beneath its frozen surface. A large ice bright crater in the southern hemisphere makes the planet visible from the inner system, leading to the planet's name. Turian Insignia Recovered Scans of the planet Pharos revealed an abandoned base on its moon. The recon team found nothing of interest, but much of the debris was marked with the Magna Colony Insignia? Well, there we go. Alright, well, that would be that then. There looks like there's nothing here, so let's get to... Sparta? And see if we can actually at least get down on the planet. Tremanry? Hold on, what was that? Unknown? Asteroid cluster! A collection of small asteroids loosely bound together by gravity. Prothean data disk recovered? While scanning the asteroid field in the Sparta system, you found signs of habitation. A recon team was sent to investigate one of the larger asteroids. The rock had a small functioning biodome, but no sign of anyone still living there. There was, however, a data console with an intact Prothean data disk inside. Well, there we go. All right, well, we're going to need to... This is an asteroid that definitely didn't show up here. We need to see if there's any more asteroids anywhere, huh? Alright, well, that's one there. I can always come back if I can't find them. There's more, but let's just cover the ground to make sure. Okay, let's look at this. Chamanry? Chamanry is a dwarf planet composed of light magnesium silicates. With deposits of aluminum, its surface is covered by wide swaths of ancient dark ballistic lava. Ancient dark ballistic lava? Possibly indicating the world was created, though, an impact with some other body in the system. Tremonry's magnetic field is non-existent. This makes it impossible for ships to dump drive charge from orbit. 
That said, Tremonry's minuscule gravity allows even cruiser-sized vessels to land safely for direct grounding. Wow. I'm going to butcher all of these planet names. I am so certain about that. Alsages? Small distant Alsages is a small terrestrial with a trace of atmosphere of methane and argon. The surface is composed of water, ice, and calcium with occasional deposits of light metals. During the Alliance's pirate suppression campaign in the 2160s, the Batarian Aluim Ranfera was caught with his frigate Tunran grounded on Alsages for drive discharge. When challenged by the cruiser Hyper Abad, Ranfera refused to surrender the Tunaran was destroyed attempting to take off. The debris is strewn across the southern hemisphere. Well, there you go. Way to go, Alliance. Rare elements surveyed. Scans from orbit have detected a small deposit of plutonium. Interesting enough. Antam Moko? This is going to be rough to pronounce any of these names. <laughs> Atomico is a large hydrogen helium gas giant with traces of chlorine and sulfur in the atmosphere. Its massive gravity well tugs many asteroids from the outer belt inwards past the orbit of Altaya and Edelis and eventually setting into the inner belt. Atomico's orbit is congested with hundreds of captured moons, most last only a few thousand years before being ejected. Dragged down into the atmosphere or ripped apart by tidal forces and added to gas giants immense rings. Attempting to navigate this chaotic environment is hazardous at best. Ships without military grade kinetic barriers are likely to suffer catastrophic impacts. Gas deposit surveyed. Scans from the orbital have detected a large concentration of hydrogen. Thank you. Appreciate that. Edelis. We already did this one. Did we already do Edelis too? Altaya? Altaya is an unusually large terrestrial world with a trace atmosphere of methane and ammonia. The surface is frozen and mainly composed of sandstone and other sedimentary rocks with deposits of iron and chlorides. Judging by the sedimentary composition of the crust, it appears that Altaya once possessed an atmosphere thick enough to support some form of liquid. What cataclysmic stripe the atmosphere and left the planet to freeze is not currently known. Wow. So something just freeze the whole fucking planet, basically? Holy moly! Alright, well, let's Commander, go... Commander, I'm picking up a signal from the planet's surface. It looks like an automated distress beacon. Edelis is a terrestrial planet with the atmosphere of carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Edelis surface is covered by wide deserts and silicate sand with only a few areas of indigenous rocks, highlands to break the abrasive dust choked wind. Edelis orbit is congested with debris thrown inward by the gravity of the gas giant Antomica. Due to a high rate of meteor impacts, exploration is highly dangerous. So meteors just fall onto this fucking planet? Yeah, let's definitely land there. Most definitely, sure. Kahoku, your men were probably struck down by a fucking meteor. Alright, let's do Tally. Sure, definitely. And then Rex. Tally and Rex? Here we go. Holy shit, let's just drive around the Normandy. Whoa! The Normandy's badass! Or... The Mako, here. Wow. Let's look at the map here. 
All right, we have stuff over here. Distress signal here, an anomaly here. Interesting. What I'm thinking about doing is I think I'm going to explore the map, right? And I'm going to cut in if there's anything good because this, these planets, it seems like, uh, I feel like there is a lot of just stuff to explore and get. I will keep you guys at the speed with what I actually do, but I'm thinking that we will, I will just cut in when there's actually something of note that's going on because I feel like there's just a lot of exploring around and finding materials, but I will let you know what I do. All right, so far we got, I didn't explore these question marks yet, but I have this deposit here, a deposit here, a deposit here, as well as this is a crash probe. So it looks like these deposits, there might be more around, but it looks like these deposits here are not actually marked on the map. So you gotta do a bit of exploring. This took a while, so cutting around this is probably actually a good idea. That could almost be a whole episode of us just going around exploring these little nooks. But let's just work around that stuff and possibly... See, because these ones, they have to be the quest. Like, this is the distress signal. This is probably Kahoku. Kahoku's men. But the other one... I'm not really sure. So... We're just going to wing it. We're just going to see where we go. But the whole... What, are, what is it called? Just like mining material and such? We can we can work around that, I, I believe. To save us some time, yeah? So what the hell is this? A mummified Solarian. Hey, how you doing? You don't really look mummified to me, friend. Recover artifact? ID tag recovered. You found Captain... Millions identification tag how it ended up here is impossible to know for sure This whole cutting around the uh, the mining and such this is only going to happen on Ultimate side planets if it's like a main quest that we're going to like the dr. Liara to Sony situation We're not cutting around that but this will at least save us some time here on these uncharted worlds Hold on Oh, you see the meteor? Look at the meteor. Get over here. Whatever. And this one will be probably his men, but I'm pretty sure we probably surveyed the area, though. Maybe after we do Kahoku's, I do want to check around and about, see if there's any more. I won't lie, I kind of wish all the stuff was actually on the map for us. <laughs> I'm too lazy, but it's okay. The Mako is absolutely fucking badass. Listen to it. Get some. Oh, this is his Marines. Holy shit. Come on. Holy. Come on, motherfucker. Whoa. Are we still good? It's spitting a shit ton at us. Holy shit! Oh. This is so fucking badass. Come on, Thresher Mole. Get some, motherfucker! That was absolutely badass. Wow. Holy fucking shit. How do I repair it? My tire looks like it's about to break, but it's okay. What's up, Rex? You enjoying this, man? Let's get moving. Come on, friend. You lead. I'll follow. Anything for you? Gohoku's men. Alliance soldiers. Looks like they were lured here by the distress beacon. Well, let's get our berry up, just in case. Looks like these men were under Admiral Kahoku's command. He'd want to know what happened here. 
We'll let them know, Rex. That's unfortunate. So they were allured to this area. Well, you need to get a better tank. Wow, how did they even fit in this tank? Are they, do they lay down on their stomach inside the fucking tank? It doesn't even look... Shepard, it looks like it's as big as your head. As, like, tall as your head. Should we take this out? Let's take it out. Does it even matter? Goodbye! Ain't nobody lure, nobody here now. Alright, well, how the fuck do we get back to the Normandy? Return to the Normandy. Let's return. We'll return back to the Normandy, and then next episode we will go about going to some of the other systems and see which one actually leads us to Dr. Tassoni. But anyways, my friends, I'm out of here. Take it easy. Have a good one. Stay safe. See you next time. Take care.